What's going on, traders? Yes, I'm sorry. You had a little bit of a five-minute window there. I, I, I had to get myself a nice tangerine here. Stone, Tangerine Express, Hazy IPA. Got to get the happy hour started. Welcome to Money Mitch. we got some great topics, guys. I want you guys to stick around. We're going to talk about some meme stock. We're going to talk a little bit about Tesla. We're going to get into some algo talk. We'll talk a little bit about a stock named AL something. I won't give it to you, but you'll hear a little bit about that. We got Penny, uh, Penny Lane in the back, and this is going to be a fun episode. We'll get even into a new strategy that she's she's talking about. So stick around, guys. And like always, smash the like and welcome to Money Mitch. It's time for Money Making Mitch. When investors need a story, we're going to the moon. Welcome to Money Mitch, where story is everything. I'm here to find you the next opportunity. It's all about the green hands. Now we all know the bull market is here to stay. Money Mitch. All right, traders, how we doing? Welcome back. Let's go ahead and bring on my good friend. You guys might have seen her on the Penny Lane podcast, but hey, what's going on, Penny Lane? Hey, Mitch, how are you? Welcome to the show. You know, I'm, I'm always in the background on your show, so I wanted you to bring you on this show because I feel like you're the perfect fit for this. This is kind of even more matching your style than my style. This is... We drink on this show, right? I, I mean, right? The cheers, yeah. pinkies up, and, and, and that's what it's all about. <laughs> We're going to have some good time. We're going to talk about the stories of the week. You know, that's what I always pay attention to. And I, I think on Friday, it's good to just – the market's closed. We're not trying to take trades really right now, but more along just talk our opinions about the stories that are out there because this – if there's any time to do it, I think it's perfect time to do it on a Friday We'll kick back, relax, and, and we'll talk about some stocks. Uh, how was first your week, Penny? Did you have a good week? I did have a good week. And you know I can't say that all the time, but I did. It's August, and I was green this week, and I came back from like a couple really big losses. It was a good week. It was a good week. Hey, so. we're having a lot, of, a lot of love in the chat. They love the koozie. Hey, I got to get myself one of those. Do we got to? I need to, I need one of those. Come well, on. why haven't you DM'd me your address? Right? I'll get you one right out. Right, you, you always got to have a koozie. I'm, I got to step up my game there. Penny doing me, t showing me how to do it. There you go. You got Lunar Aces giving you a shout uh, out. Ace, hi. That's what I like to see in Callum there too. Yeah, That's and AC, all my, all my, all my friends. That's what I like to see. All right, let's go ahead. Let's talk first things first. So one of the things that I want to look at is. What kind of stocks can really become kind of more of meme stocks right now? I mean, we're always going to get some more that are going to come out. Now, one that has been making a recent support touch that I think you've mentioned even before, Penny, is, no, I have. of course, the Dina, the Dina, the Krispy Kreme. What are you thinking, Penny? Do you think this is finally it? Did we start the move? Well, Let's take you know, this here. is a stock that I think can't fail. Why? The hot donuts. All for the hot <laughs> donuts. In fact, oh my God. So I was actually on the phone with Callum earlier today and I was going through Dunkin' Donuts and he was like, you and the donuts, you love the donuts. And I was like, oh, these aren't hot. This isn't Krispy Kreme. Like, I'm not getting a donut, I'm getting a coffee. Anyway, I think that this is a uh, unfailable stock. And uh, I'm all for it. I'm not in right now because I've lost on my last three tra three trades on it. But I'm a believer, you know. Hey, I'm, I'm a believer too. I've been I've been watching it, watching it. When I first saw it make this nice bullish engulfing candle, I was like, you know what? I think this is it. You know, it's time for the D nut. If there's one that I think could really get the move, really get the the meme stars behind it, I think why not Krispy Kreme. I think it could make a move. Uh, there's another one also that started making a move today that I'll, we can get into a little bit. Did you ever trade Wolf when it took off? The dog food. Yes, the Petco. No, and I'll tell you why. Why? Tell me I why. think that Wolf is an easier trade with options than mm. Comets. And. I am not like, I have to get a second opinion on options 
so anyway, I didn't trade it, but I do know it. It's a cult. It's a cult ticker. Yeah, definitely. I mean, woof, woof. I mean, look at the ticker <laughs> itself. It's it's pretty nice. It had a good move up today. I was actually looking at this one. Those are the two that are on my radar for meme stocks. I think they can really get going. One of the things I like about Wolf is that it's tried to break down below multiple times. Now it's starting to get some momentum. And I and I do love the moves that they've made. I, I don't know if you have a pet uh, Penny Lane, but I have two dogs and I always got to get their food and, and they, they get my food delivered to me the same day. I don't got to go to the store anymore. That's, that's they're kind using of DoorDash. It's a little, you know what I mean? Like who, who likes to leave their house to go get a big bag of dog food? I mean, I love that's my dog and all, but. That's one of the biggest fights that my husband and I ever got in was who had to go get the big bag of dog food. And I lost. I'm still pissed about it. Well, well this time you could have just been like, well, it'll be here today, honey. So don't worry about it. You're bringing it inside. So. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, that's how it goes. And, and and another thing that they did is their pickup actually gives you 20% off. So if you're going to make the drive to go to the store, they're going to give you a discount for doing a pickup order. Are you an affiliate? Are you getting like a kickback here from the wolf? Because no, I just like the 20% off. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just take the 20% off. So when, I, when I'm not feeling lazy, I go to the store, get 20% off. And sure. when I'm feeling lazy... I'll, I'll pay the 20% so it can just come directly to my house and I don't have to worry about it. Yeah. Hey, we'll, we'll, we'll see if this really takes off. Next thing I want to talk about is, of course, I don't know if you saw it, but there was the Tesla AI day. Um, and with that being said, there was some pretty kind of interesting, I would say, slash weird things that came up. So there's this new thing that they're trying to do. They're trying to do this robot. They're trying to use their technology to essentially create robots. I mean, they said, we're essentially having robots in cars, so why not just make a human one? What are you thinking about this, Penny? I mean, this is like we're living in the future. It's like we are the Jetsons, you know? Like, can this robot come to my house and clean? Right? Like, I think I'm in the market. I, I definitely, I, I don't mind. I'll take one if it can clean up my house and, and do some do some chores, right? Wait, Mitch, do you know what the Jetsons are? Of course. Okay. Of course I know what the Jetsons are. I think are. you're younger than me, so that could have been little, a... the, the, the big one, you know. What was her name? I forgot the name. <laughs> I keep thinking Alice, but that's on the Brady Bunch. We'll, we'll get it up to the chat. Yeah. Exactly. The chat will we'll give you some, some brownie points if you know who the robot was in the Jetsons. Let's see who, if, if someone gets it in the chat. Uh, but definitely, I mean, it, it's it's definitely looking futuristic. Rosie. I mean, it was they're Rosie. using They're using their Rosie. camera in the brain. They're using their computer in the chest. And then they're using like different technology to move the robot based off of essentially their computer. So, I mean, that's, so, that's pretty advanced. So dumb question, mm -hmm. my specialty. Are they going to put the robot in the, like, I have a, I have a forerunner, right? That car doesn't drive itself. It has no technology. Could my, could I buy my robot, put it in my beat up, super old, about to die forerunner and be like, drive me. It's like my own Uber. Yeah, I honestly think you just came up with a new use test. That's I mean, that what Penny's take, all about right there. That could take my, like, drinking at a bar to the next level, right? Because right now I got to be, like, I can't, I don't, I do not drink and drive. And I wouldn't have to call an Uber. I'd just be like, sit there for a while. We it got it. Like in, it seems like in the chat that's not possible, but, like. I, I, I'm not worried about it. it. I think anything's possible with Elon if he's thinking about making human robots here. So yeah. I, I'm definitely not stressing that. Looks like we got the name. It, it looks like people are saying Rosie. Rosie was the name of, of the robot. Looks like everybody enjoyed that. I can't blame it. <laughs> and no, it wasn't Toyota. It wasn't Toyota, but the robot cleaning lady. Hey, recording your home inside? I don't, I don't really mind it. I mean, my Microsoft... My Xbox records me, so I might as well not stress about my robots. I have a question. When you're working on your computer, do you put the little like piece of paper over the camera so that no one can spy on you? Ooh. No, some I really people don't. do that. And some people worry too much about that. I mean, th there was always this talk about the Xbox that supposedly the camera stays on if you have it plugged in, 
even if it's off, supposedly the camera is active. I mean, who knows? They can watch me. I don't mind. I can be a show. I'm live yeah. every day. Yeah. I'm not stressing it. I feel like I'm not doing anything that would be like, I, whatever. It doesn't bother me, but I go into my office and everyone has their little like sticky notes on the camera. I'm like, I mean. I'm with you, Benjamin. If they want to film me 24 seven, just at least send me a bill. Like, right. Like send me a little commission, a little right. extra, a, a, something on the stuff. side. <laughs> That's it. Just cut me a piece. That's all I want. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead. Let's get into the next topic here. This is the topic that's going to be interesting because I'd love to hear what Penny has to think about kind of this kind of trading and what it does to retail traders also. So what do you think about algo trading? And do you think it like benefits us? What are your opinions on it? Well, I have like kind of um, some beef about algos because it's kind of like mm, I'm not thinking like ghost or a fairy godmother or something, right? It's like, is it the type of thing that you can like convince? You can be like, oh, the algos are on this. So like it, it's going to run more. There's more volume. It's more volatile, all of that stuff. Or are you like in a good play because everyone else is in it and it's running off natural volume. And then, you know, it's been probably since April that all you hear is like, well, when they turn the algos back on, I'm like, who the hell are they? <laughs> How I love when that? I hear like, that. Someone send me a freaking save the date for when these algos are coming back on. I, it's like, remember when we had the UFO episode? Same thing. Like, <laughs> so, where are the freaking algos? I'll tell you one thing. I think the UFOs are real and the algos are real. So the question is, when do they come in and when do they turn off. I, I agree with you on that one. Because I mean, at the end of the day, algorithmic trading, I think what it really means, and, and, and I mean, there's some really advanced ones, there's cheaper ones, right? Like, I mean, there's ones that you can buy on trading view. And then there's probably the ones that are making all the money that we can't get access to. So, I like can barely turn on a computer. So I, I don't really know what you're talking about, but sure, you can buy the things. It's it's, it's programs. It's the thing. These, these yeah. guys that, that buy the algo, they don't know. They don't know how it works. They're just like sure. yeah, let, they probably don't know how to do it. They're just like do the thing. Do just do the thing, right? Do yeah. the thing. Do the thing. God, I, I, I should get an algo. You, you I see, bet I do so much better. Should they're I, expensive though. Should I do a game where I compete against my algo? That seems like fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We'll just compete against an algorithm out there. We'll get a coder to build one, and then we'll just do the real trader and compete. This yeah. seems like a show itself. Yeah. The, every day, I just am like, well, SOB beat me again. Yeah. Well, it looks like the chat is liking it, too. Benzinga should sell an algo. Hey, Luke, if you're listening out there, who knows? Maybe we sell an algo. Definitely. Hey, algos are like Zuckerberg, always listening. They know. They know. You know, Jose, I would like to respond to your comment about FLGC. Did I you see that one? Also story? had a great trade on FLGC. Oh, you did it, Penny. You High five. It. That's what I like to hear. I, I actually been mentioning this thing. I'm like, who the hell is trading this thing? Because I honestly, I haven't even found too many of like kind of like the normal kind of twin fit com uh, community trading this name, but. Good Lord, this thing just doesn't want to go away. Nice little move today. I, I don't know if you traded it today, but man, nice little move I, there. I, I can't blame you, Jose, for bringing that one up. Traded it right below 11. I mean, sorry, right below 12 to right over 12, like around 2 p.m. or so. We'll take it. We'll take it. Definitely. That move right here. Boom. Not a bad move to take. One of the things is it also had on the 15 minute, like this 200 day moving average that it was going to. Uh, you you can look to see the hourly on this chart always plays really good when it comes sideways. Whenever it gets this sideways consolidation, it likes to break out. But I, I honestly, I don't know too much about this one, but man, has it taken a huge lift. Let's finish up with the Algo talk. So one of the last questions I have with you is if you could trade with an Algo, would you really? Well, that doesn't that take the joy out of it. But then right? the like kind of because I like I like it's like um if I had a manual car, I would drive I wouldn't do automatic, I would drive the car. 
which I don't do so it's stupid, but <laughs> I like the whole act of trading. But then what if I just looked at my account at the end of every day and made like $5,000, I would maybe be happy and be like, this is stupid. Definitely. I, I, I would say the same. I mean, unless the algo was so good that I was just making, you know, 20% returns every single day. Then, I mean, of course, I mean, who would be mad about making millions? Sure. You're mad about making millions and we probably need to get to another business, but sure. definitely I agree with you. I've done so much studying. I've done, I've been at this game for longer than five years. I I would myself just be like, man, did I just waste five years and just could have traded yeah. this algo? But the, but the truth is we don't know. We don't know how good every algo is going to be. Like one thing I'll mention like someone in the chat even just mentioned it, that they, they tried an algo once and it was crap. And, and I agree. It's going to be very hard, hard to find it. Mm -hmm. So what do you think, Penny? Do you, If you could find a good one, you would try it? How much is this going to run me? Exactly. That's going to be the big question because <laughs> I need to get that money back. Because if I don't get that money back, right. or there, there needs to be a little guarantee at the bottom line. Yes, 100% guarantee you know, X amount return, then we could talk. We could slide talk it into my account. I won't be mad. But like, uh, also very funny story that some of, you know, like yesterday I was like, I am mentally exhausted. I'm going to take a little break from trading. I'm not going to trade tomorrow. I'm not going to trade ne next week. And then effing woke up this morning. I was like, not going to not trade. So there's clearly something that I'm addicted to in the trading that I would miss. I mean, yeah, I'm like right. need to go to rehab at this point. So hey, we'll, we'll we'll talk a little bit about that maybe one day. I, I get you on. I have a little area of my show where I talk more about psychology of trading. That seems like a a, a topic that I like to talk about called the random results, and mm -hmm. we, we love random results. I mean. Who doesn't play a scratch off every now and then? Sure. But <laughs> let's go ahead. Let's get into the next topic. Let's talk a little bit about your new strategy and how it worked for you this week. You know, this doesn't really mean that it, it's going to always work. And like all traders, definitely take this, you know, with a grain of salt. But what it means is, is definitely take a look. Try something new. Why right. not experiment a little bit? So what did you find today? What did you find this week? Well, so this strategy, like only works if um you have a margin account and are over pdt so good good sorry at that least for whatever. for our, 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 our younger traders that don't have that big account it's okay yes it's for the bigger traders so um i started putting like when i would go green on a trade and so usually what i do is like scale out pretty quickly mm -hmm. like in thirds yeah. And I get really caught up and like, when should I scale out? Should I sell too quickly? Da, 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 da. So as soon as the trade went green, I just put a stop loss like slightly above where I entered. And then I had like no more anxiety. I was like, okay, I can take my time on this. I can think about what I want to do. I wasn't as like frantic about it. And then instead of scaling out, I just kept like moving the stop loss up in the same sections where I would scale out. Mm -hmm. So I never sold, I never put in a sell order. I just got stopped out of every trade, but the volume of share, the number of shares I was trading with was so much bigger mm -hmm. at the top than if I had scaled out. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, anyway, I'm going to, I, really like that strategy because it's not, it's not bad at all you know one of the things is essentially it's giving you a, a method of sizing up without having to take the entry right you, you're not no longer need to decide where am i adding you're already setting that's that stop and 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 this is not a bad idea especially you know one of the things i, I would just kind of preference here at least from my thinking you got to be careful a little bit because if you put too much size on that stop you could get a far like fill. Mm -hmm. So you have to, what, what you would have to pay attention there, Blaine, is just look at the level two and see how much volume is available at that spot. That That's how you could really look at it. But this is going to get a little bit more technical than we need to. But that's like if you're throwing like thousands and thousands of shares on top right. of each other. Not so doing if, you're, that. if you're smaller, it's not <laughs> going to make too much of a difference. Yeah. Usually you're going to get that instant fill and you're going to get your adding into your position 
versus in the spot where you would be taking profits normally. So what that does is that, yes, it moves your average up a little bit. But if you get that fully extended breakout, now you're talking big profits. What that does is I think it's all about playing this game. You always have to look at how big do I have to go on the profit side compared to my accuracy, right? If we're not going to be very accurate at trading, then we need to make some big margins when we actually win. And this is what I feel I do well. And I think this is what the trade itself, the strategy is helping you on. It's helping you extend the winners, right? And then right. if it doesn't go to that stop point where you're adding, then you're still getting the same kind of stop out, the same kind of risk, but your winners are now bigger. Right. And that, you know, that's what I've always had a problem with is the saying like, cut your losers short and let your winners run. Mm -hmm. I, like, I don't know how to do that because I'm like, was that enough? When is enough money? And like, this makes it just sort of out of my hands. Like it's up, oh, got stopped out for profit. That's, that's what it's all about. I think that's, that's, that's the way to do it. One thing I always talk about is once the trade's on and you put your entry and you put your decision making, it should be kind of a, a thing that where you can take your hands off. Those are the best kinds of trades. That's sure. essentially what algos do to tell you the truth. I mean, that's, that's what they're doing the same thing. But one thing we have an ability on is deciding when we get in and out a little bit more subjectively, which helps us really if we're able to capture the alpha. The alpha meaning we get the momentum. We, if we can jump on the momentum like you're doing here and using a stop to help you get that momentum. And if it comes back down, boom, I'm out, money in the bank. And the decision was made for me. It was predetermined. And I do have to tell you, I don't know if this because I'm a woman. I always wonder like how being a woman affects my trading, but I always used mental stops and was like, oh, and it's going to curl or revert, whatever the thing. I was like, I think I'm going to give it. It would hit the stop. And then I'd be like, I'm just going to give it like another like minute, especially when I was on a limited day trades or a cash account. I just was like, I gonna, it's going to do it. It's going to do it. And now it, if it doesn't do it, it's like, F it. That, it's fine. That's what it should be. At the end of the day, when we get our profits, we should almost be at those levels that we're either going to do two things. I either say you sell always into the strength or at least, you know, like, hey, if it pulls back to this level, I'm still taking my profits because I, I, I do this on certain trades where let's say if the, the trade goes over my 20 percent mark, I'm trying to get to 30. Right. But I, I'm usually OK with 20 percent. I mean, 20 percent on a trade. It's a hell of a trade. I'll take it every time, right? And so when it gets to that 20 mark, I'm usually selling a little bit. But I'm also telling myself, hey, I'm going to let this run to 30. But if it doesn't get up there and it turns back around, cutting that 20 on the downside, I want to take the 20%. Right. I don't I don't want to give the money back and let th this thing go back to zero yeah. or, or 10%. Then next thing you know, I'm in that in-between stage and I just give the money right back. Well, that's what, that's what I would do because I'd scale in thirds. So first third would be green. Second third would be green. Third third would be red. Like I was always just it's not. The battle. It's the battle. I, 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 I know how that goes. So this is helping you out maintain those what I call on my show green hands. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, you can have paper hands, diamond hands. Those are two sides. But the, the one that you want is the green hands, the one that secures profit when needed. And sometimes you can let stocks run. But of course, we should always look for a level to get the return that we were looking for in the trade originally. Like you keep saying, predetermined. I, right. I love that. I think this is really helping your trading, Penny. So, I mean, I mean, I was green. I like I maybe every day this week, like that's been for freaking ever since that's happened to me. So, hey. Well, I, I'm glad you enjoyed that. I'm sure you did. Uh, we're getting towards 430 now. We're going to be wrapping up here. But I appreciate you coming on the show today. You guys, check out the Penny Lane podcast. Where could they find that, Penny? Um, on all your podcast providers. <laughs> Everywhere. On Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts. You can follow me on Twitter. My Twitter handle is Penny Lane BBM. You should because, like, I put out some – fairly boring content, but the podcast is great. So you should listen to it. All right. Well, uh, I'll tell you what, 
just to give you guys a little bit of more insight of who Penny is, we actually got a redirect that's going to be going to right now to her latest episode this week of the episode that she does here on Benzinga, but also check out the new podcast. I know you got some podcasts coming out. Uh, yeah. with Jake, that's going to be really Jake interesting. Came out yesterday. It was a Perfect. great podcast. I'm going to have to check that out this weekend. You guys already know I'm going to hit the download on that. Have to check it out. And I mean, you some really interesting talk about order execution and how all that works in there. I, I'm going to have to check it out. I know that you were impressed with Jake's answer. So for sure. I think we all need to definitely check that out. But that's going to do it for us today. Thank you for joining me today, Penny. Uh, we had some great time. Nice. Thanks to all my MTA people. I love you so much. Much love out there. And, and they always come here. I appreciate you guys coming here and supporting Penny and supporting Benzinga like always. We'll see you next time on Money Mitch. And until then, guys, I mean, pinkies up. Let's get on out of here. It's time for Money Making Mitch. When investors need a story, we're going to the moon. Welcome to Money Mitch, where story is everything.